Welcome, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Caesar ET24 Pro book scanner. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So I wanted to get a book scanner and I looked at some different models. This scanner is essentially a camera that looks from above and takes a picture of the book. I think this also projects like a laser grid on it because when you take a picture from above you're going to have those curves in place and this has software to compensate for it. They put a little box opener on the front, so that's kind of neat. Okay, so there's foam on the lid here. It's about maybe a quarter inch thick. Seems nicely packaged. So I'm not going to be book scanning every single day. So it does look like this package is such that I can put this back in here for storage. At least that's my hope. So let's pull this out. This looks like the manual. So we have a getting started guide. So it only has a few pages here in English or each language because it has, looks like German, Italian, probably a bunch of others. So we have assembly instructions. It says take out the device, the black soft pad and other accessories, place the device on a flat table, align the notch of the black soft pad with the edge of the device based properly. Comes with power supply, USB cable, finger cots, hand button and foot pedal. Here it says the scanner can scan single page documents, business cards, even documents that have been bound such as contracts, books and archives. It says the smart scanner divides the paper to be scanned into two categories, flat single page and facing pages. It has two different processing modes for two categories which automatically process images from scanning. So it shows the two different types here. We have flat single page and facing pages. This has automatic surface curvature recognition, automatic edge recognition, automatic edge cropping and rotation correction, automatic curve flattening and finger caught removal. So this lists the features on it. I'm not going to go over all of these. This has two modes, USB mode and HDMI mode. It says you can only use one mode at a time, but you can switch between the two modes. So you can use this as an object projector. So in a classroom, you might be demonstrating something, you can send HDMI from this out to a projector. Then it has USB mode that works with their software. It says this does support USB video class standard. So that is the same as a webcam. So you would be able to use this with things like OBS or Zoom or other software. Okay, it comes with software on a CD-ROM. So hopefully that's available for download also. Yes, there we go. So here is the button, there's USB on it, the power adapter. So this has adapters for different countries. I'm in the US, so I'll install this one here. Plastic on the back side, peel that off. The power cord is around five foot. Here's a foot pedal. I'm not gonna get that out right this second. Here's a USB cable. It's USB-B to USB-A. Like the power cord, that's five foot. And then we have finger cots for book scanning. So these are going to be little grips. We have rubber here, so you can put these on your fingers like so, probably do it either way. And you can hold the book pages down and then the scanning software will read this and it will remove these from the scan. So here's the mat, it feels like a neoprene rubber. This is a side light, so this goes on the back. So if you're scanning glossy things, you can use the side light to reduce gloss, it looks like this. And then here is the scanner. So I'll get this off my bench here, I'll unroll the mat. So we can see a notch here, that's going to go towards the back, and the scanner is going to fit into that notch, like so. Let's take a look at the scanner. So we have a screen up here, and we have some touch buttons. Looks like there's a microphone also, maybe. On the bottom here we have LED lights, we have the camera, LED lights here. Down here we have some adjustments for lights, looks like magnification, camera. Now magnification only works for HDMI. This is where the side light attaches. And on the back we have HDMI, reset button, USB-C, power in, and power switch. It looks like there's plastic here, peel that off. So my first impression is that the fit and finish on this feels very nice. So let's get this plugged in. Let's just start off with HDMI. So I'll plug it into power and I'll plug in a monitor, I'll switch it on. And if we see on the monitor back here, we can see my hand. So if I place an object on here, we can see it on the monitor. Now there's obviously glare there, it doesn't look perfect, but we can see how that works. And then I should be able to zoom in on the object. 
So if I tap it, it zooms quick. If I hold it down, it zooms slow. Now it does look like it is digitally zooming it. Let's press the brightness button. Okay, so that actually turns on lights. So we have low, high, off. Oh, and these are not touch buttons up here. These are just indicators. So it's telling me the microphone is on. Let me turn the volume up on my monitor. Testing. Testing. It doesn't appear to be sending the audio through the HDMI. If it was, I would think I would get some feedback. So I'll disconnect the HDMI and we'll connect it up to the computer and we'll get the Caesar software installed. Then we can test scanning with this. Okay, so I'm here at my computer. I'm at the Caesar website. I'll click download software. I'll click on ET24 Pro. And I'll download the software for Mac. Now this is also available for Windows and Linux. Looks like the software is around 886 megabytes, so it's quite large. So I'll open that up. I'll install the software. So on a Mac, I'll just drag it into my application folder. So I'll open up my application folder, and it'll open up Caesar Scanner. It's asking me if I want to open it, I'll say open. So it wants me to enter the serial number, which is on the bottom of the scanner, so I'll enter that in. So it says we can send you video tutorials via email. It's asking where I bought it. So I bought it on Amazon. So I'm going to skip this for now. So it's giving me two options here, scanner or visual presenter. I'm going to click scanner. It looks like we can change this up at the top also. So I guess let's try scanning something. So I have a book here. This is the Ashley Book of Knots, first edition. So I'll open it up like so. Now there's an LCD up here. It's not super high quality or high res, but it can help you frame things within the camera. So that's really nice. So that actually looks pretty good. And I don't feel like I'm going to need the little finger holders. So maybe I'll just hit scan. I'm not sure what's going to happen. It says the scanner would like to access your microphone. I don't really need the microphone right now. So I'll just say don't allow. Okay, so along the right side, we see these different color modes. We have auto enhance, we have color black and white. This is really black and white, although the pages are not black and white. Then processing method, we have flat single page and facing pages. So I'll go ahead and click facing pages. So when I clicked facing pages, it put a dotted line on the preview. So it looks like I'll need to slide my book until it lines up with the dotted line. That seems about right, like that. I think that's good. Let's click scan. So I think that did it. So I can double click on that. It opened it up in preview. And it looks quite nice. You can see it did auto leveling on it. It turned the old pages to white. Let's see what auto scan does. I think that Auto scans when I flip the page. Yep, that's what it did. So let's turn auto scan off. Let's try plugging in the button. This has some plastic on the back side. So it has some grippy rubber there. So I turned auto scan off. I'll flip the page, make it flat, and I'll press the button. And there we scan the two pages. Now this is an older computer. I think it's around nine years old. It does take a second for it to process. I don't know if this would be faster on a newer computer, but it's pretty fast. Let's go up to settings here and see what we have. So we have frequency, 60 hertz, resolution, it's default of 24 megapixel, and we can change it to lower modes. So we'll leave that as is. We have DPI, we have 320, we have 96, 320, or 350. Image format, we have JPEG. Image quality is low, medium, or best. Then we have page settings, so we can change left to right or right to left. Then down at the bottom, we have this says hint tone. Okay, so I think that beeps when something is done or correct, I don't know. I don't want beeps. Then we have exposure. 
looks like we can adjust that back and forth. I'm not seeing a difference there, but I'll hit reset. So on the left here, we have the files we created and we have set file saving path, open file location, and set naming rules for photos. Let's click that. So it's named image, we have five digits, serial number starts at one. So let's hit back now and see what we have. So it looks like on the right, we have our files. So I can preview these. Now on the scan page, when I double clicked on them, it opened them up in preview, but it looks like we can process them here. And here we have select all files, select all left page images, select all right page images. So if you had something you needed to crop, say from left side pages, let me click that. We could open all of those up and then we could click crop and we could come in here and say crop that on all of the pages. But I don't want to do that right now, I'll cancel. So at the bottom here we have adaptive width and height or one to one display, box select, crop, rotate, adjust contrast sharpness and thickness, color mode, reset, print, OCR, barcode recognition, and then manual correction. So let's try OCR. So we're using English, so it's export into Word, Excel, PDF, PDFA, or text. So let's go with PDFA, we'll hit confirm. We'll save this on the desktop. Okay, so down at the bottom left, it says performing tasks. It says task complete. So let's go to the desktop. Let's open up the book. So here we're going to have a PDF and it did OCR. So we can select the text. Let me open up a text document and we can paste the text in. So this is combining the image and then behind it, it has the OCR. So this is good for archiving. So as you can see here, we can see part of the edges. We'd want to crop those out. There's also little blemishes. So if you wanted to make this really good, you, you would want to do some cleanup on this. Now, if we select an image on the right-hand side, we do have options of delete, rescan, insert new image, add new image. So you can put a new image before or after, and then details, which tells the file size, resolution, and when we scanned it. So let's go back to scan and see where we're at. So we don't have anything listed over here on the left anymore. So let's scan another page. and see what happens. Okay, let's see where our saving path is. So this is saving under my home folder, and then it created a directory called Caesar images, then it has a date stamp, and then the image. So if we go back, it just added those on to the end of our listing here. So let's try quitting this. It says it's going to delete the cache, so let's see if it deletes the work we just did. So I went to the seizure images, and we have the folder, and it looks like it did keep our scans. Let's open the software back up. It says file list is empty. So our previous project is not open. Okay, so if we go up to the upper right, we can say import folder. Let's try this, there we go. So we can choose our folder we were working on and get back to our project. So the projects in this are stored in folders. So I'm guessing you could go in and open this up in Photoshop or other software. I use Affinity or Pixelmator and edit these and then bring it back into here. Let's actually do that. So this image 001 has little dots on it. So I'll quit this. I'm going to open this up in Pixelmator and we have a little Band-Aid tool. It's called Repair. I'll zoom in on these. And we have these little dots. Let me get a smaller brush size. So if I click on these, it will remove them. Of course, you could select this and use a paintbrush to paint it white or use other techniques to clean that up. So let's actually do that. Let's select this. Let's fill it. So I'll save this, close out of here. Let's go back into the Caesar software. And here we see the edited image. So this looks very versatile. We can do processing right here in the Caesar software, or we can step out of this software to do the processing elsewhere. Then we can bring it back in and we can go through and do our OCR. So that's the Caesar ET24 Pro book scanner. I found this super easy to set up and super easy to use. Software was pretty intuitive. The quality of the scans looks really nice. The curves of the book are not showing up. Now there are many more features of this I could demonstrate. If there's anything you want to see, drop a comment below and I might be able to make a video of it. We do have the other light that goes back here for glossy things, so I could find something glossy 
and try and skin that. But I wanted to make this video showing essentially what I'm going to use it for. But certainly this has more usages than what I just showed. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.